I invite you to really take the time for the next couple of hours, turn off your distractions, cell phones, all things that you occupied, so you can really be still, listen, and absorb the presence of yourself, of your true self, and have many or few insights. And we'll wait a few more moments and we will begin. We're going to record this, so if you would wish to listen to this. Towards the end, I'd like to share a meditation. It's, I call it power meditation. I think it's a very useful one. I've played with this for the last few days, and I think it's a, a powerful one for life, to make it used to when there's reactivity, negativity, limitations. So, okay, let's begin. I'd like to read the, something, few verses from Wuxing that are short and beautiful to open it. The subject that uh, we uh, gonna cover is why meditation can affect deeply your life, and uh, what is it really meditation? How to choose the meditation that suits you best? And uh, I'm wondering, can you hear me well? Everything is uh, great. If anybody cannot hear, please uh, make a note or raise your hand because I cannot see you guys. So I'm just seeing the reflection of my body, the physical body. Great. So let's make use of this time and uh, Make no, no effort to meditate. Make no effort to not meditate. Make no effort to make no effort. Being is not something one does. Being is what one is. So just be for a moment. Be still. And Recognize the immediate presence, which is you. It takes no time for the recognition to reveal itself. Sense it radiating in an instant. What is already here within you? Taste the presence, the beauty of this presence, the vibration the sense felt experience of who you are, just this timeless being, formless being.
make no effort to meditate. Make no effort to not meditate. Make no effort to make no effort. Being is not something one does. Being is what one is. The beauty is that from the mind perspective we can never understand who one truly is. Yet you can be it, sense it, feel it. You can even see it through someone else's eyes. It's a still presence which radiates silently yet powerfully radiating itself. Let me read another beautiful. Stay with yourself, feel the presence of yourself. Seeing clearly is not mistaking imagination for reality. A life seen clearly is a life without conflict. Seeing clearly is not mistaking imagination or reality. A life seen clearly is a life without conflict. The presence which is you is always watching through your eyes. Through the ideas, through the imagination, through the physical eye, sees everything. Just be the seer, without any preference, without any judgment, without labeling. Recognize who you are right now. There's no other opportunity. Because it's always eternally now. Once the attention is resting, is fixed, stay as that, even for a moment, glimpse it out, rest as yourself, feel the nectar of the presence of who you are. Allow yourself to be yourself. Even if images appear between the eyes and the background, these images are thoughts appearing within the field which is you, the field of awareness, the field which is boundless. So you are watching 
illuminating the thoughts that appear within between the physical eye and that which is prior to. Don't look for awareness. Just look from awareness as awareness itself. I hope you enjoyed the presence of yourself, giving yourself attention, stopping, chasing, going after ideas or images just once. Stop everything and remain, remain unmoved. <clears throat> unshakable all presence that is you, me, it occurs against the background of total absence at the end of you me, it, total absence remains unchanged. Lovely, huh? All presence that is you, me, it occurs against the background of total absence at the end of you, me, it. Total absence remains unchanged. You're always looking from total absence at what appears as thoughts and images, voice in the head, objects that are seen through the senses of the world. Just for an instant, immediately, Stop all activity, mental activity. Stop trying. Stop doing. Just be for an instant.
I hope you feel the presence. This presence, which is always here, if we just give it attention. So what is meditation? What is really meditation? So there's few definitions for meditation. And if I look at it, I see it as focused attention. When you focus attention, it's a meditation. So the attention can be focused on an object, someone, something, something or any particular object. And that's if it's focused or concentrated, that's a form of meditation. In the scriptures, they divided meditation, concentration, and inquiry into the self. And meditation, they defined it in two ways. One way, it's the subject is focused on an object. That means a thought is focused on an object and an object can be something external and a closer object would be your breath or your bodily sensation still it it is an object it is an animate object then they define concentration which the mind focused on itself the thought is concentrated means it's not focused anymore on an external object. It's not focused anymore on the breath or sensation. And inquiry into the self, they defined it as beyond subject and object relationship. That means nothing to do with external object, breath or sensation, nothing to do with thought. It leaves you prior to all of that and that's supposed to be inquiry into the self. A lot of the time when the mind in, begins inquiring into the self, especially when it's unpleasant, it tries to inquire to escape the unpleasantness. That's not inquiry into the self, that's trying to be inquiry out of the unpleasant sensation, which means there is a resistance, which is a conflict, and that's not true inquiry into the self. It doesn't mean you cannot question, except inquiry into the self, the question leaves you as yourself, not as thought, not as concepts and ideas, and not, nothing to do with the objects of the world or bodily sensation. Okay? So even if we look at that meditation, concentration, and inquiry, we can see that it's all focused attention where the attention is focused upon, either on an object externally, or the breath, or the bodily sensation, or thought, or ultimately a question that leaves you with the attention on that which is before any thought. Okay? So we can see the attention can be focused on that which is aware, that silent awareness, which is you. The attention can be focused on a thought, concentrating. And the attention can be focused on the breath or bodily sensation. And the attention can be focused on an object. So, in ancient times, they could practice all the modalities of attention. They would paint mandalas, so the attention would be on an external detail, really fine, really precise, takes full attention, and it's continuous, so the mind is not so wandering. Another way is to focus the attention on external would be reading without your mind wandering. So if you read slow and you're totally present, the presence, which is you, is looking through the eye at the word, yes? 
and that's built a form of concentration. It can be, if I go back externally, they used to use arch or they used to do a slow meditation of walking really slow so your attention is fully on the movement so the mind is anchored. Again, it's a concentrated, focused attention. So what I see, it doesn't matter how we, we, we would define it, it is a focused attention. And the most important that all of you, including myself, have is the attention. Wherever we put our attention grows. And when we take the attention from it, it wither. It just disappears. It loses its energy. Because attention comes from awareness. And awareness is the source of attention itself. So the attention can be on an object, to summarize it, can be on the breath, can be on bodily sensation, it can be on thoughts, and ultimately it is on that which is aware, which is you. Yet it's not the you that the mind is familiar it's not the you that you imagine yourself to be. It's not the you that you perceive yourself to be. It's not a you that you become. It's a you that is prior to any becoming. Okay? So I hope I'm clear enough. I think I do, at least for myself. And if I'm not and you have questions, please write them down. If you want to ask verbally, you can actually raise your hand and there's a, a, an icon there and then I can uh, put you so you can speak and I can listen, everyone can listen. I've never tried it so we can try and see if it works later. And then uh, I, can give, I can give an answer in the best of my ability. So meditation is focused attention. That means when I focus the attention, I become familiar with what the attention is. So that brings me to why meditation can affect deeply your life. Because anything that we are familiar with, we make peace and friends. We are not scared and afraid. Whatever we are not familiar with, either we are scared of it, because it creates, we start to imagine different ideas and images that scares us, that has nothing to do with whatever is as it is. And when we're familiar with something, we can work with it, we can make use of it. And when we're not familiar with something, we are enslaved by it. And the beauty is that Awareness is not separate from thoughts and body and objects of the world. Awareness permeates thoughts, the body, and the objects of the world. So there's no separation. And awareness still, although it's not separate, it is not the object, it is not the thoughts, and it's not it's not a name and form. So it is one with everything, yet it's not none of it. And that enables us to say, yet don't create a new separation in your mind that who you are is separate from thoughts, emotions, objects, or bodily sensations. So, how it deeply affects our life? Our life is whatever we think about. This is our life. This is our world. Whatever we perceive, this is our life. That means I speak to a certain amount of people, each one perceive it and interpret it in their mind, and that's their life. So, when you are focused and paying attention, become familiar with your inner world, 
thoughts, feelings, and sensations, then it affects deeply your inner world. When your inner world is deeply affected, the outer world is reflecting that as well. And that's why it's really, really key, I think, because until I didn't, I wasn't aware how the workings of the mind plays within me and how it tricked me and I got confused around it and about it and how I identified it and believed the thoughts to be real then what happened is I was trapped in it and it generated more feelings that I didn't like which I didn't know how to get out of it like how to be free and break out of fear or how to really meet the fear when it arises within I had no ability no tools because I wasn't familiar with that and this is why Nazir Gadatta talks and I'll read, I'll read this about meditation and the importance of meditation is that <clears throat> Nazir Gadatta speaks the question says all teachers advise to meditate what is the purpose of meditation Maharaj we know the outer world of sensations and actions but of our inner world of thoughts and feelings we know very little the primary purpose of meditation is to become conscious of and familiar with our inner inner life the ultimate purpose is to reach the source of all life and consciousness itself. One thing we have to realize that meditation doesn't bring you to yourself. It lives you as yourself and it enables you to work with the mind as a friend and a tool because the mind is not an enemy the mind is a tool that can be used when one apparently appears to be in a physical form so you want to master your mind and when you master your mind you master the whole universe and you realize that you are also beyond and that's why it is so deeply can affect your whole world because you master your mind, you master your whole world and you can realize that which is beyond and while in the world from the point of view of beyond you use the mind naturally, effortlessly and effectively. And then he continues Incidentally, practice of meditation affects deeply our character. We are slaves of what we do not know. Of what we know, we are masters. Again, he's pointing at the same thing, and that's, I can share that that's my experience. That the more I'm familiar with the workings of the mind, the less I'm scared of it, means reactive to it, the more I'm willing to approach it lovingly, kindly, gently, openly, the more I welcome whatever arises, I welcome all life openly because the worst that can, I can experience is either thoughts or sensations, that's it. So all is well regardless to what happens so the circumstances don't matter it's the state of mind that matters means how I approach whatever is happening within me in my mind and the more I can approach peacefully respond to the thoughts instead of react to them the faster the mind just rests, dissolves instantaneously, and I remain. And if I don't, it doesn't really matter. This is why the power meditation, I think, is very useful. 
So let's see if there are any questions. I think uh, it was clear that um, why meditation can affect deeply your life and what is really meditation. And then we'll talk a little bit more, more subject. Jude, hi Jude, welcome, I'm so happy. I saw your email, you're welcome to write me emails if you wish. I'm not good in making long writings and that's not the purpose, I can really speak with anyone, also via Skype and um, I'd like to help if I can. Empower, inspire, inspire, awaken. How, however, you you want to call it. I don't. It doesn't matter. So, when the mind roams, is it necessary to continue focusing attention on awareness? Is this resistance? If you, when the mind roams, okay, I'll start a little bit. If the attention is on awareness, fixed, and the mind roams, usually, it's not always, usually, the attention gets trapped with the thought and you like, you jumped on the train and you start moving with the train. So, you can either shift the attention, you can question. And that question can cut the movement at times and at times not. And because life is only in the present moment and the thought appear as a sequence of um, pulses of one thought after another, one thought after another, one thought after another, you cannot predict it. Means you cannot plan it. Therefore, there is no formula. You do this, you get this. You do this, you get that. It doesn't work like that. Because this is really good for the mind so it can project and predict. Yet, life you cannot predict. The next moment you cannot predict. That means, and everyone is welcome to try and, and, and see for themselves. Nobody knows what would be the next thought that appears within the field of awareness, which is there. And now, if you're still, See if you can predict which part of the body is going to move first. Or even if you can predict what will be the next physical movement in the body. If I cannot predict this too, predicting anything else in life is hopeless. And I invite you not to follow what I say, please. Study for yourself. Be a student, not a follower. Follow the thoughts from where they arise to, from. And follow the thoughts and watch where, where they dissolve into and remain. Don't follow somebody else. Study for yourself. Don't be a believer. Really remain the knower. The knower that knows everything, which is you. Not, not from the mind perspective. From your true being. That's for your question. 
it's find the path of least resistance. So if I go again look at the question, when the mind roams, is it necessary to co continue focusing attention on awareness? If you can, you focus the attention on awareness. And if you can't, focus the attention on what you can focus the attention on that enables you to stay in harmony. Means if you cannot focus the attention on awareness and now the mind is wandering and you watch that and then you question from where am I looking at the thoughts, you focus the attention on the question. And when the question completes itself, and there's no other thought, you might remain. You might have another thought coming and give an answer, and that's fine too. And you focus on that, and you might question that. Who am I without this answer? And maybe you have another answer. And then you ask yourself, who would I be without this answer? Yet, don't get too much into the loop of that. You might focus and shift the attention on listening to the noise. And that would be the entry point. And it might that there won't be entry point, point to awareness. And that's okay too. You have to love that too. You have to get excited about that too. What happens if you're really emotional? What happens if you get up really emotional or you're all upside down or you're stressed or you're upset because somebody said something and you know that it's not the other that got you upset. It's you have a belief that triggered you and still you're feeling upset. So can you enter from there? Means putting more attention on yourself means just the thought I choose to let go of the belief that caused me this feeling. I choose to let go of all the negativity within me. I release all negative beliefs and set myself free. And you move from there like a vehicle. Don't perceive the mind as an enemy, because as long as you perceive the mind as an enemy, you react to it. You're too cautious with it. You're dancing around avoiding it. You have an agenda instead of accept it all, love it all, embrace it all, meet it as a friend, not as an enemy. And by the way, the mind is unstable. So don't look for it to be stable. Maybe I mark that for you especially, Jude. I mark that what Nazir Gadata said. He said, It's the self stands beyond the mind, which I hope all of you understand that, know it, deeply know it within yourself. And if you're not, we can clear the doubts if anybody has, so you can have a glimpse. And as you get, when you get this glimpse, it's you recognizing you as you, not as name and form, not as a personality, as formless being, changeless awareness. And the more you get familiar with yourself as yourself, means the self recognizes itself by itself. It's just like being familiar to anything else, being familiar with the mind, with the thoughts, with the beliefs, being familiar with the feelings, all the range of the feelings from the lowest vibration to the highest vibration. Be really familiar, welcome all of it, be able to move all of it, embrace all of it. Don't dwell on it, don't get stuck in it, don't perpetuate it, don't resist it, don't fight it. Learn to work with that, 
test your way, explore through experience, not just intellectual. So he's pointing, as a child, that's the questionnaire, as a child, fair, fairly often I experience states of complete happiness, verging on ecstasy, later they ceased. But since I came to you in India, they reappeared, particularly after I met you. Yet these states, however wonderful, are not lasting. They come and go, and there is no knowing when they will come back. That just, just this question can teach all of us how it's his mind looking for a particular state of mind. Yes? Awareness is indifference what is the state of mind that the mind is at at any given moment. Okay? This is, I think, is really key to realize. So, Maharaj answer, how can anything be steady in a mind which itself is not steady? So the question I ask him, how can I make my mind steady? Maharaj, how can an unsteady mind make itself steady? Question mark. Of course it cannot. It is the nature of the mind to roam about, period. All you can do is to shift the focus of attention beyond the mind. That's if you can. So if you're frustrated, that means you're generating a conflict, an inner war. Find the path of least resistance and it requires exploration experimentation. Yes? If you have more questions, Jude, please ask. You wrote me also an email. If you want to repeat that and I can remark on that, I'll be more than happy. I hope it helps some people as well, the question. I talk to each one of you that is sitting in front and listening and sensing and recognizing what's going on inside you right now. Alexander. Hi, Alexander. I'm very happy that you're here. I am what I am, and it is everything and nothing at the same time. I am what I am. And it is everything and nothing at the same time. Is that your experience, truly? I am what I am is not even accurate, just as wordings is not accurate. So the sages pointed out for the mind and that the discrimination would be profound. They describe that this they de define the difference between who I am and what I am. What I am, most of the people are familiar with what they are, which is a physical form and a bundle of thoughts, ideas, beliefs. So what is body and mind? Who, who I am, or who am I, is not a physical form, not a state of mind, not a thought, not an idea, not a belief, not, not a concept, not a habit. It's prior. Prior. is not everything. It permeates everything because it illuminates every thought and every form and of course every circumstances that is perceived through the senses. So I am who I am, that's correct, except I can know it intellectually because it's very easy to understand the knowledge intellectually. Really, really. It's easy to understand it. 
it's easy to speak it and memorize it and it's even easy might be to teach it yet knowing it it's something else and if you know who you are undoubtedly then that's good because the works begin right now for you not for the one who knows itself the one who knows itself always knows itself as itself the work is to remove what you're not undo what you're not clear out all the obstructions from who you are and that's the real work you can choose and do as you like just don't be mm, don't deceive yourself knowing that you're deceiving yourself because the knower of who you are sees it all yes so honesty is really key so some there was a woman she used to say don't be spiritual be honest because honesty will leave you with the experience of who you are not with the theory of who you are and I don't say that you do not experience because you can experience it right now yet I invite you and everyone to really undo all the unconscious beliefs anything that is hidden allow it to come into the surface and meet it meet it with clarity meet it with in investigation meet it with examination meet it by just watching it without reacting it to it so awareness is it permeates everything yet it is everything when there is nothing else yet it depends what is the experience again so it's everything and nothing at the same time awareness is never nothing from the mind awareness for the mind awareness is nothing it cannot make money out of it it cannot do anything with it because the mind cannot use awareness because the mind is seen because of awareness so for the mind awareness is nothing yeah it's nothing yet the experience is fullness it's presence it's a knowing it is an absolute knowing so I hope that helped everyone and we'll move to the next question Jude any advice from last week's webinar I feel like I'm sacrificing my peace to make living and make money so we can look at it one way don't sacrifice the peace don't make a living and don't make money the question I ask are you strong enough isn't just the idea that stop everything not knowing where what's gonna what where it's gonna end isn't your mind gonna be more reactive all the fears would come into the surface so the wise says take care of the three fundamentals basics food clothing shelter if you have this and you're satisfied with that you can fully dedicate your life for this inner world uh, work going putting most of your time most of your attention to examining your ideas beliefs inquiry meditate focused attention yeah because meditation also it's the natural state of being that's also meditation that's why it confused people I mentioned that's why focused attention it covers everything 
the natural state of being, it's a focused attention on who I truly am. Okay? Therefore, you have to ask yourself, what do you want and how it makes you feel? And go with what resonates for you. So if you want to experience peace, the question I ask, when are you going to experience the peace? And then there would be vasanas that would come into the surface. Are you willing to just watch it all unmoved? If you can, it's black, you're blessed. Yet, if you can, you wouldn't have this conflict inside you. Then I say, go make a living that it doesn't disturb you. Go, go earn money because it's you're not making money you're earning money go earn money and do it joyfully explore what's going on your reactivity basically what are you saying you want to you don't want to experience the reactivity and then you prefer peace I've experienced it I've been there for some time, I tell you, I took the same preferences of seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. I t went internally and I was like, okay, I'm leaving the whole world as much as I can, which you never can. Because in a physical body, the physical body is connected to all the objects of the world. The air is breathing the body. It, the body is affected by heat, temperature environment, food, water, yes? So, as long as you're in a body, and who is in a body? Awareness is in a body, and then a personality was formed around the body, which is beautiful into itself. It is an expression. You cannot cut it and get rid of it. So, you have to embrace it. And what I mean embrace it, look at the reactivity and find how you choose to just let go of the reactivity. Choose to release the reactivity so you can be free in that instant. And maybe in that instant you would ex experience yourself as unshakable peace. And then other thoughts will come and you maybe take action and maybe not. It doesn't really matter. So what happened, the same habit that runs us externally, seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, when we go inwardly, the same habit stays. And now I prefer peace of mind, which might be even not the, the eternal peace. It can be just a suspension of the mind. And I don't want the reactivity of the mind, or I don't want particular thoughts. Well, I don't want to dream, which is, you think that you're dreaming instead of seeing that the thoughts are images that are dreaming themselves, and you're watching it all. So the preferences moved from the external to the inter in, 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 internal, and then you're judging, and the judging causes you suffering the comparison causing, causing suffering. Touching the likes and dislikes cause you the suffering. And that's what you want to look at. Just see the defect of it. That's all. In the light of awareness. Leah? Why there is a, a hidden or something hides in a in difficulty to rec recognize who I am.
because the attention where we most majority of us as humans are conditioned to fix the attention on objects of the world which are more um, dense and we are tend to lose our attention, our attention get fixated on thoughts and it's like a train or a river, we get lost with the river and that's veils, covers the presence of who you are which is already here, you're already who you are even when you think you're not I come and tell you yes you are who you are already the thing is that the mind has to be more sharpened, more fine, more refined, more subtle so that awareness can shine through or if the mind is more still means not so reactive, not so much interested in thoughts, ideas and objects of the world then it rests more, it rests more than in an instant you realize that you are who you are that you are that which is aware that you and then the mind will realize I was always that and I'm always that yet yeah, that's the mind jumping like a monkey because awareness never think that except the, the knowing just moves to the mind and the mind start to have clarity where to fix the attention and that's really really important the only entity that is confused is the mind is not awareness and never awareness never lost itself whether there are forms no forms names thoughts no names no thoughts awareness remains awareness it's timeless the opportunity as a human being when we 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 have to become more human i right? that's what i see because as a human being most of our action behavior and actions is not humane at all is not humane at all because we have so much pain frustration and aggression violence that's not humane so I see as a human being we have to um, purify our mind and sometimes the body to actually be more humane and when we are more humane that means the mind is more pure then awareness is shined through a human being that means through a human which is made from body and thoughts the being shines through so we have to prepare the vessel of the body and the mind for this being to shine through because if not what shines through the body is not the being it's the ego it's the personality it's the ugliness it's the violence it's the hatred it's the judgment it's the criticism it's the complaining it's the blaming it's the divisions that we make good and bad I like I don't like better, worse, all of that. So I hope that answers your question. That's the that's the reason. Deloris. Hi Deloris, good to see you. It's very good that you're consistent. How do you work with hateful hateful thoughts, thoughts of death? Thought, that means thoughts you hate the thoughts you hate you are just low and negative vibration okay? negative thoughts and low vibration so you have to really first of all be able to look at it be familiar with that be honest ah this is hateful thoughts wow I'm so happy I'm so grateful that I can recognize it that I can acknowledge it then the next step I can start to ex examine it and or release it and that's the power of meditation 
Maybe we're going to do the power meditation in a moment if there are no more questions, which for now I see no more questions. That um, you can choose to release it. And by choosing to release it, you don't perpetuate it by keep resisting it. See, hate, when we hate something, that means automatically we resist it. In order, in order to neutralize the resistance, we either question it, either choose to let go of it, which is an inner action, or shift the attention from it completely, which is most of the time not so easy or possible to do. So one want to have all the options and that brings me to the importance and the meditation would give you an answer to your question, yes? As a practical means. That brings me to the question that I wrote, how to choose the meditation that suits you best so it's first according to your personality and second is what works for you at any given moment. So you can choose one meditation and after some time it would be mechanically monotonic. It's not your attention is already split, it's wandering. You're not there really. You're not fully present. You're not fully aware. You're not fully awake. So that's mechanical. That means one has to shift. And that's the beauty of it. So there's no one formula and that's formula and that's it. So you, you find what works for you at any given moment. So you might inquired and that was beautiful. You had the realization, you had insta insight which is not inferior to silence or you inquire and you question there's just silence and then you focus the mind and your attention there's no, you don't have the experience of yourself as silence and that's beautiful too. So what? And that's what works for you in that moment. That way it keeps one fluid instead of being rigid. Okay, this is what I'm going to practice. And that's, I find it to be limited. I've, I've done that too. So I don't tell someone, don't stick to practice, stick to it, suffer a little bit, be rigid, be stiff, hate yourself a little bit. Uh, judge yourself that you're not good enough, that you cannot stick with the practice and that you know, and that's okay. Or you can move fluidly like a river, not dwelling on what, okay, I wasn't able to practice this. Not even focus on that. Just start practice again with something else. Just focus your attention on something else. Just ex inquire or question or focus the mind or pay attention to your breath, whether it's near your nostrils, your, your lower, uh, uh, around the nostrils, you can pay attention to your breath in your lower abdomen, maybe you pay attention to the birds, it doesn't really matter. That way it cannot, the mind cannot become me mechanical with the practice, which create, it sets in a stagnation for everyone. And then everyone in the spiritual journey faces stagnations at different points. The thing is that when one sets into stagnation, the mind can deviate from inquiry into the self, which inquiry into the self is a whole umbrella actually. Inquiry into the self is divided to hearing the knowledge, reflecting the, upon the knowledge, and one-pointed attention. So, because the mind tends to forget, there is forgetfulness, then hearing it over and over and over and over is really essential for everyone. 
and reflecting upon it, staying around it, keeps your mind, your attention fixed more on internally, subtle thoughts, ideas, concepts that are more subtle, more fine that you don't see right away. When you don't understand something, think about it, dwell on it deliberately. That trains your mind to focus, focused attention. That's a meditation. And then when the mind is focused and the, the focused attention is sharp, then inquiry into the self and abiding in, in, in your true nature is easy. So let's say, let me share the power meditation. If you have a, if you want to write, you can leave right now the writing. We will send the, the audio of this um, webinar, web class, so all of you can listen if you wish so and the practice would be there. The practice is very simple and it begins like this. It's Let's start with the low vibration, the negativity, and I'll explain after the practice why. So be comfortable, sit comfortably, relax, and um, Yeah, yeah, record it. We're gonna record the the relax, and I invite you to ex really experience for yourself the power of meditation, how powerful it is, and if you practice it in your daily life it really can affect your life deeply. It would start to be active within you. It's not a magic. Don't expect anything magical. It's very simple. We will start with the lower vibration, means lower emotions, negativity, and then we move to a higher vibration. And you would move, you later on would do it freestyle however you want to and because you have the power to choose so it goes like that I let go of all negativity within me I let go of all limiting beliefs. I release all obstacles that are within from my life. I let go of all anger. I let go of all frustrations. I release the judgment within me. I release the criticism within. I choose to let go of the reactivity. I release all obstacles that are within. I release hatred. I release frustration. I let go. I let go. I let go.
I I let go of the false identification with me. I let go of the conflict within me and set myself free. I release all the obstacles that are hidden within me from my sight. I release all the blocks within. I release the jealousy within. I release all fear. I release the judgment. I choose to be free. I choose to approach every thought and every feeling with loving kindness. I choose to be happy. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I choose to open my heart. I choose to open my mind. I choose to live harmoniously. I choose to devote myself to my true self. I choose to devote myself to know, to knowing myself, my true self. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I choose to love every thought unconditionally. I choose to approach every emotion the best I can. I choose to approach every thought the best in my ability at any given time. I choose to free myself from all boundaries. I choose to experience boundless awareness. I choose to be unshakable peace. I choose to have a very powerful attitude regarding every thought and every situation or feeling that arises within. I choose being a peaceful warrior. I choose I'm not sure. I think something got disconnected, so I'm not sure.
I choose to love myself unconditionally. I choose to attract love into my life. I choose to give love to every cell of the body. I choose to love every corner of my mind. I choose to be kind and honest with myself and everyone around me. I choose to connect to my inner strength and power. I choose higher vibration as long as I'm able. I choose to fix the attention and whatever I can fix the attention on. I choose to feel good. I choose to be goodness. I choose to be loving. I choose to be free. I choose to be happy. Feel the presence beyond choosing in the background. Feel yourself. Just sense that silent awareness. I choose to transform my life. I choose to go deep within. I choose to live fully. I choose to let go of the past, which is painful. I choose to let go of all pain within me. I choose to embrace everything. I choose to see that everything is an opportunity for me. I choose to see that life can never make mistakes. I choose to see that life is only good I let go of all fears and doubts within me. I let go from all fears of death, pain, negativity. I choose to live freely. I choose to live as an awakened being. I choose to thrive for the highest of the highest. I choose to purify my mind. I choose to live as a living example. I choose to cultivate an amazing attitude of love and kindness, gentle, soft, yet powerful.
I choose to be unshakable in the midst of chaos and a storm. I choose to live as limitless. I choose to live with the knowing that everything is possible. I choose to live fully and deeply. I choose to let go of all negative beliefs. I choose to let go of all limiting beliefs. I choose to live as boundless ever free, supreme bliss, eternal peace. Just feel what is your experience right now. What is your sense felt experience? We can stop and I'll explain a little bit regarding the meditation. So the power of meditation, I'd like you to explore and really see the power of it in your daily life. And you can break the meditation as a five minute meditation if that's all you have, except at least commit to five minutes. And if you cannot commit to five minutes, commit to three minutes. If you cannot commit to three minutes, commit to two minutes. If you cannot commit to two minutes, commit to one minute. If you cannot commit to one minute, then commit to two thoughts. One time, choose. I choose to let go of all negativity and set myself free. I choose to be free. Okay? So let's elaborate a little bit about the practice. If you like to write, begin with that. You sit and you write all negatives that comes into your surface spontaneously. You sit, pen, paper. I choose to let go all negativity. I choose to let go of criticism. I choose to release all my all judgment within me. Spontaneously allow it write, 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 write. You write it for a few minutes. If you do five minutes, do it for two or three minutes. Stop and just be still. With your eyes open, see what you sense. Have you emptied and can you see, feel the fullness of who you are? In an instant, awareness is instantaneously here, yes? Immediate presence. And then you move to the next, the second part. You write everything you choose that is the highest. You choose to be free, you choose to be liberated, you choose to be loving, you choose to experience harmony in your life. You choose to, just like it was in, in today example. Low vibration, you choose to let go. High vibration, you choose. Yes? So you can write it down. The second half, you write down, you write down, you write down. You finish the writing, you sit with your eyes open and you recognize what is here that is not a thought. That I would recommend to do it for the next 30 days and I would like to hear your feedback about it. Okay, 30 days, we're towards the end of, we're 24th of July. Let's do it by the end, until the end of August. 
you can write me down what is your experiences if you have any questions the ones who don't like to write the practice still works for you you just be still and you start with all negative I choose to let go of my judgments I choose to let go of all criticism I choose to let go of all fears and doubts in my life and then you move to I choose to be free I choose to be happy I choose to be peaceful okay once you practice that if you choose five minutes good for some people who practice more they might choose to do it 10 minutes somebody would might do it 15 minutes somebody might do it 20 minutes some might do it one hour and split it it doesn't really matter the next phase okay so I just come back once you do it without writing pause between you move from the negative low vibration to the high vibration stop recognize who you are which is not low vibration or high vib vibration it's the silent awareness which is looking through your eyes and just be familiar with yourself as yourself your true self and then you move to a high vibration yes and once you finish that you stop and you recognize what is here not as a thought not an idea not as a s statement once you practice enough and I don't know what is enough for anyone so I'm, I'm my approach is always freestyle I give a structure then you you practice it in your freestyle find a way that work what works for you so you cannot say that what the, the instruction can ever lim limit you that would be your story not to practice so don't believe your mind when it tells you that once you get comfortable you can do it freestyle I let go of all judgment I choose to be free I choose to be happy I choose to be to experience abundance in my life I choose to be kind to all living beings I choose to be loving to myself I choose to be loving to all beings around me I choose to be skillful I choose to be precise I choose to be honest I choose to open my heart I choose to stay with my mind open okay and you can alternate what is the result I'm aiming I'm aiming that you activate this so it start go that it's going to come out out automatically when is when you now working and you like judging somebody and hope you notice that and it's like ah, I choose to let go of this judgment I choose to give love to this person I choose to love myself I choose to thank him for having gave me the opportunity to see this about me that's one option if you're more advanced you can do that if you're not advanced you can just I choose to let go of this judgment and that's it and you continue on because when you choose to let go of the judgment that choosing is a higher vibration I choose to free myself from this judgment or I choose to release this judgment that's a higher vibration that's what I'm interested in. and then I'm interested that during the day when you're not judging when you're not criticizing or when you're not complaining then you you can I choose to fix my attention on who I am I choose to be free I choose to be happy yeah that's one option another option let's say you have negative emotion and like yeah I then it's like oh I choose to let go of the resistance and I choose to be happy I choose to approach it in an open way I choose to approach, approach it in a new fresh way yes that's what I'm interesting that that will be dynamic in your mind actively working so you can dedicate five minutes a day when you're quiet 
then do it during the day when you're active. If you cannot five minutes, dedicate 15 minutes. Anyway, you understand my point? Dedicate some time, give yourself attention, give yourself love, so it can really impact deeply your life. And that's what we started with. Why or why meditation can affect deeply your life? From my experience, it affects deep your life in a way that you can't even imagine right now. So, anybody has any questions? Please, the floor is open if you wish. Okay, let's close the recording and open, please. So we recorded that part, so that way you can actually go back and you'll be able to listen to the example of the meditation. I'm interested that you'll find your way that works for you. And I'd like to hear from you how powerful it was for you. If it's not powerful, that means you're not sticking with it enough. It might have to concentrate more. Yes? Any questions you have? Any doubts? I hope this was helpful for you. Was it helpful for you? Serge, there's a question. Hello, Serge. Good to see you. I'm aware you looked for me and I didn't return back to you. I, by the way, know that I'm open to everyone to communicate with anyone that wants to on the Skype. If you feel like, wish like, um, wish so, sorry. And um, when I'm still sitting, then I am not active. When I'm not active, I'm not productive. When I'm still sitting, when I'm sitting still, I'm not active. When I'm not active, I'm not productive. That's true. You can actually be still and be very productive in your mind, except it would be a different form of meditation and I would do it in the Power Mind group that we are forming. We're actually building a website for that and everything. And uh, that would be a group that would be separate to work on your setting goals and your productivity and is separate. This is undoing. Undoing can open and it allows you the, to burst or birth of your most aligned expression in the physical form in life. So that's right, you are, you are accurate, accurate. When you are undoing, you are undoing the, the, you are undoing creation. So, yes. Balsa, sorry I missed most of the session. Why do you recommend open eyes versus closed eye meditation? I find, and also Ramana was talking about in a few sages in the scriptures for thousands of years, that at times, if the mind is focused enough, it's much easier to recognize who you truly are, who you truly are with your eyes wide open. So you do what works for you, just 
kind of have a mental note in your mind that play also with your eyes open. So when you are active, let's say somebody is talking to you and you insulted, you can lower your eyes and instantaneously you might recognize the immediate presence which is you, which is not affected by the insult that you experience. It would be very practical that as you wake up to who you are, which you might already be awake, to take it into your daily life and utilize it in a very powerful and practical way. That's all. Yet do what suits you best right now and along the way explore and experiment. You're the student, you study yourself, you study what works for you, you study what doesn't work for you and what works for you now, the next moment what might not work for you and what works for you the next moment might not work for you moment after. Okay? Sometimes I'm tired so my eyes are closed. I'm not drawn to open the eyes and sometimes closing the eyes is not something I'm drawn to. No rules, no right wrong, all is well, everything is accepted. Okay? Thank you. Floor Thank you for writing. I'll read what you write. That makes me really happy. It's good. And it's powerful. Play with it. Uh, Floor wrote, alone I could feel how the body and mind heal. I felt the change deeply. It was a strong meditation. Definitely I know something is different now. Very good. Very good. And when you practice it, you would notice that the state of your mind shifts and the, and the being can shine through. And even if it doesn't, when the state of mind shifts to a higher vibration, that's a healing process as well. Erin. Hi Erin. Good to have you here. So I'll read. Thank you Alon for these workshops. It is really great to connect like this every Sunday. Today I received a great reminder to flow specifically with ourselves and our practices. I saw that I have been judging myself around completing certain practices each day and it feels much better to release this idea to flow with what feels natural. Thank you for this power meditation practice today. Much love. Thank you. I feel goosebumps because it excites me, it inspires me. Very good. I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful. Wonderful. So, we will uh, complete for today and uh, our intention to plan to meet next Sunday you can invite anybody who is interested to join to have a taste and a glimpse for themselves so they can be support, supported and share it with others. I wish you all the very best. If you have any questions, be in touch and communication. My, the intention, we are actually forming something that there would be a, a a, a group that supports and uh, inspires each one to keep on doing this work so it's not fly by night and uh, it's it's a life's work yes and um, I wish you blessings your way love your way and eternal happiness realized every moment, every moment, every moment, again and again and again. I love you all. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday.